Welcome back to the rig review and today we're going to take a look at this rig. This is Lupin. This is based on the Lupin house school or mentorship here. You got different rigs here. Let's go to the side here. You got Lupin, Bleu, Sally and Sarah. Sally, Sally. <laughs> French or English. Now, this rig is not available for the public here. This is not for purchase, for download. This is a rig that is exclusive for Looping House students. Now, they are having a promotion here. Where you can subscribe to their site by the 12th of May. So by the 12th of May, you can get this rig for free, but then after that, it's only available for the students. Now you're wondering what is Looping House? Uh, I actually have a blurb here that I can read. Looping House provides advanced mentorships for aspiring animators looking to lift their animation to feature quality. Their mentors are from the world's leading studios like Disney, Pixar, Sony, Illumination, Adina, etc. And if you want to learn more about them, check out their website as I have here. You can see, of course, the reviews and a blog for the site. You can check out the site. Of course, there will be a link in the description to all of this. And I will also post uh, the rig and the link to Looping House on my Animation Buffet website. As always, there are a bunch of reviews on there. And I collect rigs from all over the place and collect them on this site and redirect students and you know whoever needs rigs on there. So check that out, check out Looping House. And full transparency, I got this rig from Looping House. I'm not a student or a mentor or you know, teacher. I'm not affiliate at all. But they sent me the rig to help out with the promotion. And I'm gonna check this out with the usual rig walkthrough. Speaking of which, there it is, the rig in its glory. Now I added some lights when it comes in. It's fairly dark, so if you want to animate like this, that's totally fine. I had a bunch of lights just for the review so you can see what is going on. All right, so there we go. These are the controllers. Now, I was provided this video with a walkthrough of their tools, which is really cool. And instead of kind of rehashing this and going through as well, I'm going to add this at the very end of this review so you can see in Steven's own words what it does. It's very cool. You have a AM tool shelf, as you can see. I'm going to scrub through this, but again, at the end of the review, you can see the, the full length clip here, but you have a marking menu. So that when you left click on this or right click, depending on your setup there, you can see that you have IK, FK switching. You have a bunch of tools like mirroring stuff. It's super cool. It's, it's already from the get go, very robust. You can see here all those options there. And also as I'm scrubbing through here, it gives you a uh, picker. So this is the looping MG picker, as it's called here. Bunch of stuff. You can see the offsets, you have tweaks, you have lattice deformers, which I saw, which is really cool. It's definitely a very cartoony rig. You have a lot of options to deform and manipulate this rig. So it's definitely on the more advanced side for cartoony deformations and acting and just kind of really pushing and breaking the rig to no end. And it also comes with its library here. You can see here, you got finger, facial poses, finger poses. So as a school, Providing this rig, it comes with a bunch of support in terms of not just like this is just a basic rig. There's a bunch of options, but there's also there are a bunch of options, but also a bunch of ways of accessing this. So if you're a picker person, there you go. If not, obviously you can work without it. But I think that's pretty cool from the get-go to have all these options. You can see here display visibility on and off. So it's it's it definitely provides a, a healthy variety in terms of workflows and and how you can work. And you can see here you got different pivot points for hands and uh, it just there's so much stuff to go through this is over 12 minutes long so i'm going to put this like i said at the end of this just kind of rig walkthrough because it's so detailed and awesome why why rehash and maybe you know say something that where i forget or say something wrong so watch out for that at the end now when it comes to the rig there you go in all its glory if you don't put in lights it's kind of dark in my setup now i'm using my 2020 yes it's not the newest newest. So you have a main rig like this and you have the main controller. So that is obviously working for this. You can scale the rig using this controller. You can obviously rotate and do a bunch of stuff. Uh, and then you have the visibility on off for extra controls. You can see this here. And then you can take that and move this around. Usually for me, this is always like, oh, do I want a different pivot point? If you don't have a tool that changes pivots like that. So you can have your main character like this and then this is then more of a kind of a, a Superman flying setup then where you can fly around and go bam, ba -da -ba -da, da -da -da -da. that's pretty cool. And there is another stop. So you have a bunch of these you have then displays on off like that. And on the other rigs, you have no extra. I always check. I would always check um, the child controls or anything that's rig related, you know, for, for options or extra controllers. Now, as always, I don't know why I start with the feet. Ooh, we got some detailed textures on those massively long feet. All right, so we can go with this controller here. This is for options. So you have the IKFK blend. So you can see here how the control is changing. Obviously, after that, it's your classic 
AFK setup, and you can see that control is right there. To move things around like that, or you go back to an IK setup, which is then this controller to move things around. But let's go back, and then you have the stretch top as always. Every rig has that kind of thing, and you got the same thing with the bottom stretchy. You got the squeeze. So if I take that leg and stretch it all out here, and then go back to this controller, you can see here what happens with the squeeze. And then you have also visibility for all this, right? So you can take this guy's here, turn on off, and you have the tweak visibility on off. So with the tweakers, you can go in there, change this around, you got get extra ones. So there is a bunch of stuff. Like I said before, it's very, very customizable. Obviously, you know, what pose is this? But <laughs> there is so much stuff you can do with this rig, so many controls, which is really, really cool. Going back to this, if I grab that main controller and I rotate the foot around, you can see nothing happens with the knee. So some rigs have something where when you turn the foot, the knee comes with it, not in this case. So you can either do it like that. And also here you have the IKFK blend on both sides there, or you select this here and you have your twist here. So you can change it to be like that. There is that snap, right? So now you have a knee pin these all have different names here. So you have the, the PV pin. You know, the twist is fairly the same name, but that's always something with sp uh, specific rigs that have different naming conventions for a bunch of stuff. Again, you have a stretch. So if I want to take this leg and I stretch it down, then you can say, yeah, but I don't want the stretch. You also have a soft stretch where it will tweak things. So when you go into this, you can see how the knee kind of pops. But if I bring this all the way up to one, you can see here there's a there's a lot less of a pop there. I think that's pretty cool. That's super helpful on walks. So I definitely like that. And again, you have your world space for a uh, hip and world and then the IKFK blend, like I said. I'm always a big fan too, actually. This is as an aside, when you have like, different ways of accessing IKFK blend, because sometimes you think that, well, the blend should be on the foot or like an, an elbow blend should be where the hand is but sometimes it's not sometimes it's back to the main controller and then it's kind of hidden i know uh, as i've worked with a few rigs i am a big fan of that then you have separate controllers here so you can translate you can also rotate and this is also for the middle so you have deformations for again all kinds of posing this goes all the way to the front and then you have right there this is for your pivot so you can technically move this around like this if you want but then you can also have your Kind of a foot roll banking is in the middle and then you have this one here where this has like all the overall foot banking stuff so usually on the rigs you have this on the main controller here this is up here so you can't rotate or anything this is purely through translate where you have your pivot on the side for banking and then you have foot roll is like this this is a really soft roll here or going all the way back breaking the foot back but i like that there is an option to go really far with this and obviously this is on both sides. And there's another one back here. So if you have this, you can move it technically from that. Just watch out, that's where the pivot point is. But then you also have all of this here to pivot around like that. So lots of options, which I think is pretty cool. Then going back to the knee. So this is again your IKFK blend, but you can do your twist with this as well. Like I said, this is your Benbo. You have the smooth start. So you can see where this begins. Smooth mid, smooth end and then the fall off percentage here. So you can decide how much this is gonna affect this so it's not so straight. Again, lots of options, very cool. As we go up here, you have a lower one here. This is, let me bring this down a little bit. Okay, up leg swing control. Again, some of these are differently named, but uh, that's the usual on the side. You can't really rotate this, no. Can you scale? Oh, you can scale. So, but you can translate this out. There's one more comes a bit more from a different pivot point, but this one you can actually, you can see you can do a bunch of stuff. You can't scale. Like, I do like when there's a scale option to completely deform things. So right now there's no extra controller there where you can deform stuff. So given that you have all these options here, like I wish you can see how you can make this bigger. It's, you know, there's a fall off, it's pretty harsh here, but anything where you can do, you know, you can scale things up. It's not everywhere. You have to kind of look at which part of the rig but I'm a fan if you have extra controllers to kind of even sculpt even more. So if you already have all these cartoony options, why not go further? Anyway, these are the hips here. You can see here that the pivot point and how much it affects the rest. You can also translate like that. There's nothing else uh, in the channel for that 
controller there. This is the main route. So you can go up and down, which is pretty fast. I by now have kind of an older setup here, older computer, but this totally works. No scale, but again, you can rotate and translate and all that good stuff. If I zoom in a little bit, you can select this gimbal control. You can see there's the next one here. You have free control visibility. So these are ooh, right there. So with this, again, you can sculpt, and that's what I was talking about, where you can start scaling things. These are all the options. These go wow, right beneath here. Again, you can do a bunch of stuff to shape, which is pretty cool here. Turn this off. You have the hip pivot. So here you can see how we can move that pivot. So if we are moving all the way over there and then you rotate, you can see now this is the pivot, which is pretty cool. Again, you don't have to uh, add any like, different locator setups or anything. So if you want to pivot from here for whatever reason, it can be like that. You can imagine like someone is here grabbing the guy by the hips and you want a simple setup like that <laughs> whatever you whatever your thought is on why you would do that i think that's cool i'm a big fan of extra pivot controls ikf controls here's on both and then you have ik only so then i have those helpers here let me turn those helpers off this would be your standard fk right you can still translate which is always very helpful but if you don't like that, you can go back here and say, I actually just want IK. And then this is your IK setup. I'm also a big fan of this because it gives you, it's kind of, sometimes you have too many controls on spines and it gets very convoluted. Whereas you have a big box like this, this is a bit more accurate to your uh, rib cage here. So if you move this forward, you know, you still have a nice bend, but you're not over twisting. You can still translate, you know, and shape your, your uh, line of action, your curves, however you want to. And I, I like that they're options. As always, they're good options. Sometimes it's easier to do something where you do have FK controls, but if you are not careful, especially when students animate things, sometimes it, it ends up being like this. Like you start breaking the rig. So in that case, it almost, if you start animating, this might almost be the easier option of just one controller. Think about the line of action. It's just a bit simple. It's a bit simpler setup. I know, I'm a big fan of this. I, I like that they have this here. Now breathing. You have the chest breathing like this. You can see how much it expands. I like that it expands more to the front with a little bit of keep alive in the back. I think that's nicely detailed and accurate here. Uh, the belly, so a big inhale like this. And then through shoulders, which is funny because I just talked about this to one of my students about breathing where it's more in the upper chest and then you can kind of rotate the chest back and also do some in the shoulders. And I like that this is kind of separate so you don't have to actually animate the shoulders because you might have already shoulder animation through something with your arms so it's sometimes tricky to add like an overriding i mean you can use animation layer but you can have like an overriding layer of um of breathing so i, I like that i like that that's actually in here as a separate controller so again plus points for this rig Let's go, let's see, let's go up to, actually speaking of shoulders, I just got the shoulders here. So this is how far we can go here. You also have autoclavicle. So if I take this guy and rotate this up here, right? You would actually have to use the control for the clavicle to go up. Now, if I change this to IK and I go like this, you can see how the shoulder moves up. Now you might not like this. I kind of like this personally because it's, it's there and it's immediately more accurate and you can always counter or change things. If you don't do it and you forget, then you end up with something like this. And I have that with students, sometimes with, with more professional work as well, where people don't go far enough or at all with their shoulder animation. And just in terms of body, me body mechanics, they forget that they're kind of there. I don't know. So again, big fan of autoclavicles. This is your low part here. You have clavicle, world, chest, if again, this is through your... Um, world space and all that good stuff now it also lets you translate in case you want to reshape and move things around uh, that's also good here for this again this is autoclave on off these are the only options for that let's go back and actually move this up here so this is your ik arm and as you move this around this is your true ik hand so as i move this around you can see that the wrist stays in that orientation now is there anything that changes that if i look at this setup here you have no scaling here, but you have to rotate, obviously, and translates. You have the visibility on off. You can see this here. So this is your elbow control like this. You also have a twist. As we said before, this is your 
point here if you have a lock if your elbows on a table for instance let's put this back you have your stretch on off so let's just go back here stretch i don't want this yes or no the soft stretch like we talked about but that is it what i would love to see and again most rigs don't have that but the recent uh, vixen rig that i was reviewing the second that was the one that comes to mind because it's just so rare that rigs have this is that when you move this around an ik arm the wrist actually stays oriented to the forearm and i prefer this just because this is an immediate ik flag if and someone animates an ik arm you can always tell a because of the lack of arcs because iks are just straight it goes straight from a to b because that's you know the nature of ik but also the wrist orientation does not change so then you have to manually kind of make this work so it looks like an fk arm and that can be a lot of work can be tricky especially for students they always struggle with this so anybody making rigs i highly implore you to give anybody an option to have that on and off so you move this around it would automatically align to the forearm like an fk rig so that would be my not a critique point but my my wish list i guess huh now if i go back just so i can see this a bit better like such here we have this option here so with this this is pretty cool that's what you saw in the picker walkthrough in the movie that's pretty detailed i don't know if i have seen any other rig do this with that ease of uh, you know usage and flexibility that's pretty cool how many times would you use something that detailed you know that's always something that riggers struggle about i can do all those options but will animators use it and will it slow down the rig? And these are all valid points, but uh, I don't know. I like that this is here. Now you have your IKFK blend, like I said before on the other controller. I'm glad that we have this multiple points. Stretch top, stretch bottom, like I showed with the legs. There's the squeeze as well. And then you have all of these options. Again, these are for bend bows on and off, extra controls on and off, like I said here. Show this again. You have this, but on top of that, you have that. Like there's so much you can do. Super detailed for sure. And then with this, you also have um, kind of a quick posing for the fist, obviously just like this. You have to adjust the thumb. This would, if you punch someone like this, you will break your thumb. <laughs> you have your immediate spreading of fingers, and then you have pinky curl, ring curl, and so on. This is very common, but I like it. Again, this is for like a quick setup of quick fist like this, or you know, if you want to do it like that. But obviously you can do this all separately. So you select these controllers individually, rotate and there you go you can apparently scale again i'm always a fan of scaling options that's cool now if we go back what do you have here making sure i don't miss anything nope these are the controls you have all this here for that the cupping translate oh you can look at that every time you can translate like an ik thing it just gets it's just faster for a setup might be trickier in your graph editor though but it has all all those options there which i like and you can go all the way down to the top one if you want to change kind of your your fist posing stuff like that so again all the options on fingers are there obviously for the thumb as well that's pretty cool and as i showed before this is your ikfk blend and for the elbow so let's get to the neck actually first before the face you have this option here and then for the head it's here so even though it, you grab it here the pivot is down here and then you can see here there's a slight rotation and deformation in that neck. So if I go down here and then I select that one down there, you can see how far we go in terms of deformation and range. Now there's a line, a line option. I don't know what that is then here. You also have gimbal. So again, you have an extra control. You can see on off here and then tweak visibility on off. So look at that. You got a bunch of options here. So since it's such a long neck, you have lots of options to go with that. Let's check the head controller here. You have a gimbal, same here. Head lattice on off, so you can turn this on. Look at this here. Now you can go, oh, I want to deform this even more. This is pretty bonkers for a setup. We definitely have squash and stretch options on different rigs, but something that's like this, clearly visible and usable on a rig, I'm not sure if I've seen it like that before. That is pretty bonkers, I gotta say. I like this. Now, speaking of squash and stretch, is that your classic? It is. With somewhat directional, yeah. There's a limit here. You can see how far that box goes. But you can. Question is, 
Is there one at the bottom? This must be the front? No. Okay, this is for the mouth. Sometimes you have a bottom squash and stretch. And I don't think this one has it. I would always look for if you do any type of rigging. If I see this color and outside in, the, in a round setup, I almost expect this to be the same and pulling somewhere, but it's not. So look for like rig consistencies, but there's a bunch of stuff here. So let's go with this one. If you grab here, you got this one where you can translate. This is from below the nose. It takes the nose with it a little bit, but if you rotate, it doesn't. And then you have one more, but you can see it takes much more. It takes the ears as well versus just that mouth part. You got the jaw in here. Actually, here's one here as well. You can take this and do chin only. Ooh, you can also scale and really check here. Show pivots, okay. Don't see something on off. I might be missing here, but these are the only options that you can see. This one has no options, but let's go back to the jaw. So you have jaw opening. You can see slight deformation in the nose. That's interesting. Do we want that or not? Jaw offset. Okay, so here you have your jaw offset control. You can do all this here scale to some degree. Then you have the follow lips, yes or no. So that's what I was wondering. If I do this, the upper lip is not affected. Okay, take this. Okay, so this is your, some call this the sticky lips or whatever you wanna call it. So this is when you, when you chew, it doesn't open the mouth versus here, this is your normal control. I wonder, this is the lips align speed, okay. I wonder if there's a way to reduce how much the nose gets affected. So this seems to be, okay, upper lip control. We're getting to the nose here. This gives you nose tip control. This gives you that. I see nothing in the channels. And the same thing, this is the, the upper part of the nose. I'm assuming this will be lip control. This is super detailed on lip shapes. Very cool, I do like all this. But I do wonder, because this is, lower lip we had an overall mouth shape mover this is the chin yeah i'm not sure if there is an option to limit how much the the cheeks and uh, the nose are moving i don't see any option there i could be missing something i'm gonna be all honest uh, i might be missing an option there but that would be good to have a kind of a fall off like yes or no to uh, have more or less influence but look at all these controllers i'm always a big fan of Overall controllers, so you can shape things quickly without getting into the nitty gritty for quick blocking. This is pretty detailed. I do like the, look at that. Doesn't break too easily. This is some really nice deformation painting there. Pretty bonkers. Can you scale just for, uh, why not? Uh, extra controls, if you didn't have enough. <laughs> okay, it's just one. I was just wondering like, how many extra controllers do you have? You can also rotate, which is like if you have upper control here, you can do your lip curl in out. Again, you have all of this here. You can probably scale. Yes, you can. Holy moly. Yeah, there's a bunch of stuff you can do. That's a pretty bonkers setup. Since it's open here, you can see you got your teeth. Oops. They are stretchy. This is the whole setup here. Moving all of them. And then, of course, you have your tongue all the way. Sometimes there are options on the tip. Nope, not up here. That, what is this? Nope, this must be moving the whole thing. Yes, it is. And you can see the lower teeth. So lots of options there. This must be like a middle bend. Yes, it is. Crazy, crazy amount of options. I like it. You can go a bit higher and then you have skin control for this. One higher here, you have overall cheek control. Like I said, these are nostril controls. Let's just bend this guy here. And then you get, you get your nose, Pinocchio, a bunch of stuff. This here, let's go to this one. This would be, if we translate out, can you scale? So this would be your kind of a cheek puff. I see, I see. Then we go out and we have, this is an overall ear control. This must be the same with a bit less fall off there. And then you got your shapers if someone pulls on the kid's ear. There you go. Anything in the back? Nope. Well, there's that in the back, but in terms of facial controls, not just yet. Then we have extra little shapers for this. Same thing here. Look at that. It's pretty bonkers. 
you get to the eyes. Let me see. You got probably an overall eye socket mover. There you go. Then we have shaping of this, including a smaller one. If you really want to go into really detailed, uh, you know, if you push your finger in there, you can push that in. Lots of stuff there. I like it. One here. Okay. Get your eyelids. Nope, that's the shape here. That is the eyelid. Okay. You have collide gap. Okay. Okay. So you can. Oh, wow. I don't think I've seen that either on a, on a lid here. They have a lid squash. Not sure how many times I've seen this on a ring. That's pretty interesting. If I take this. Okay. You can go pretty high in your lower lid, which by the way, I wouldn't go too high. That's a frequent note that I have for uh, some animators. Don't go too high, but. So you can see here as you close, where's the other one here? That's the top. Let's say it would be this high and I want to do a full closing. Okay, now it closes fully, but you can see some intersections there. So what does this do? Collide gap, okay. This can fix things a bit, I like it. And let's squash a little bit of something. Yeah, pretty robust, I like it. Then we have this here. This is for your eye rotation. If you don't use a controller, we have tweak control visibility. Holy macro. More. More Lambus bread. There are so many options. That's pretty bonkers. Fish eye. Oh, freshy eye. What is freshy eye? Let's go back and take these out. Freshy eye? To be honest, I don't know what freshy eye is. I'm going to be honest. This is a blind walkthrough. I don't know. Iris scale makes sense. What is freshy eye? I will have to follow up and comment or add in the comments what that is. Then you have this option. Can you translate? Yes, you can. You know, it's actually missing a uh, eye highlight. Some rigs have uh, an eye highlight here. You can also move around and scale and do a bunch of stuff with it. Before I say this, let me just check the actual controller. So this is where it is connected. Okay. So that is follow like that. And that's usually for a single eye. Okay. No scale, no eye highlight. Okay. That could be something they could add an eye highlight. It always gives it a bit of extra life to have that, you know, whatever light source highlight you have here. Pretty cool though. Obviously it's the same on both sides, but I just want to quickly check any options I might have missed in the channels. Nope. It's crazy, crazy detailed. Now, what is the upper one here? This seems to be the upper mover. Got it. And then just quickly, what is this? This is ooh, another one. With a pivot from here. So many options. Crazy town. And that is the main head controller, as I showed you before. Again, with different options here, as you can see, including the head lattice, which is bonkers. And since you have a hair, you got hair options like that, including scale. So if you don't like all that hair. I mean, you know, you can minimize this and have that character be like this or like that. That's pretty cool. Different pivot. No, what is this? That is very specific little option here. Yeah, as you can see, lots of controls for the hair, which is good with such prominent hair. You want a lot of controls. And then we got eyebrows. You can see here different setup here where you have that as your main one to move everything. I also like that it's not, you know, sometimes you have eyebrow controls where it's just, it's purely just up and down without any options to do any of this left and right. Can't rotate, but still I like options like that. There's an inner control that gives you this. Ooh, this time you can, okay, this is for your, if you have a furrow, you will bring in the, the corners up. That's good. You got an arrow here. Oh, okay, so you got your overall shape like that. But of course, if you don't like it that broad, we're getting into locator style controllers like that. Oops, out. What is this? Another one. Ooh, that's an overall. Oh, that's a remover. <laughs> Actually, that's pretty cool. I like that too. Okay, and there must be an overall mover. Yeah, on the outside, even though the outside uh, eyebrows are usually bit still. So if you do something like this, right, you would have a little bit of influence, but not the whole thing. Then it gets a bit too uh, disconnected from the, the muscles and the, and the facial setup. But that just means how I animate. 
cool though. Lots and lots of options. That's pretty bonkers, I gotta say. Holy macro. I'm of course massively fascinated by this guy. That he can do like someone gets, you know, maybe like the face is against the wall. Ah, I wish I would be like a face flattener. I remember on Space Jam 2, we had a face flattener option. <laughs> Yeah, this is kind of like an overall squish, but you could just kind of... If a character would be squished against the wall, you would have a full-on, just flat, straight flattener for cartooniness. That was pretty cool. Very, very cool. I think I think that's that. Better be. This is a longer, longer walkthrough, but that is a very, very cool rig, I gotta say. Lots of options. Again, super cool. You know, look at this. <laughs> when, when, like, I feel like, okay... I want to do a specific animation where someone can do this and then you choose that rig. Again, do we need all those options? I don't know, but it's cool. It's good to have. And I don't feel like it's it's slowing down the, the real-time interaction. It's very cool. So there you go. Poor guy. Look at him. Ah, fully squished. Let me just unsquish his face there. Poor guy. That's it. That's your looping rig. Nice textures too. Yeah, it's very impressive. I think that's definitely a good selling point to uh, sign up for, for that mentorship and for the help to get that kind of uh, cartoon you rig. Now, I've seen a few examples. For me, if you if you would review something and, and look at uh, people's work, I would definitely consider taking this hair, which is definitely a trademark thing in terms of the looks, and actually bring it down. I'm just I'm butchering this rig, but just so it, it's not always that massive hairdo. I'm just saying, not that you have to do what I'm doing here. I'm really killing it, but um, sometimes, you know, if you see a rig over and over and over and over, it gets a bit tiring to see always the same look. So if you animate with this, explore the hair, explore, you know, different kind of uh, coloring on uh, the outfit. It just helps just to be a bit more original. But there you go. There you have it. Thank you again for Looping House for, for uh, giving me this rig to uh, showcase this and provide a walkthrough. Very impressive. I can see that this is definitely on the cartoonier side to do a bunch of different stuff, which is very, very cool. Again, smooth stuff here. Look at that. And <laughs> could almost be a logo there. Anyway, that is that. Thank you for watching. Now, stay tuned. I am adding, now, like I said before, the very detailed walkthrough of the studio library, the picker, and all that stuff. So stay tuned and watch it for that. And if you liked it, as always, for the algorithm, like and subscribe, all that jazz. This is the YouTube pitch as always so if you want to see more follow me and subscribe and you can see more and that is it thank you for watching and until next time so ignoring the the picker and, and, the, and the rig and whatnot but there's a tool that i'll send you as well um, called am tools and so basically when you install it it'll create a this like a, a menu option called am tools and then you set a hot key um, so i've got mine currently set to the the key that's next to one um, which is that, but you can, you can obviously set it to anything. And then basically what that means is that you have, you can then click it and get a marking menu. So you hold that in, oops, and then click uh, the left mouse button. So you're holding the, the key, click the left mouse button and you get this, this menu, which, um, you know, the, these things are all pretty self-explanatory. It's all pretty self-explanatory, in fact. Um, but basically, this is the RKFK switching, which is super cool. Um, so let me do this. That's super, super nice. It works really well. Um, and the mirror also works super well, too. I'm not sure if we have to select both or not. The mirror. Okay, so just mirrors to where the other one is. Okay, so yeah, just mirrors to whichever one you select second, which is not exactly a mirror. Oh, I think it's flip. All right, let's see. Awesome. Um, 
content outside of that. So that's the marking menu which students get, which is really cool. So it's definitely worth mentioning that. And it comes with a picker, I guess. I've never used that though. I just stick with the MG picker. Um, yeah, so in the face, there's some cool stuff. Um, basically, there's a few levels. I think you can see in here. The tweakers. Eye tweaks on. So you turn them on in the picker and they also come on in the rig as well. And you get an extra layer of control there. Um, it's tweaks, tweaks, tweaks. Yeah, the iris guy. I think, I think everything is pretty self-explanatory on here. This is a, some cool selection sets. Um, yes, and tweaks, jaw. Um, you get some really nice stuff in the mouth. Um, yeah, uh, one thing to mention is we've got some hairstyles saved in the in the studio library that everyone gets as well. So you don't have to have this big oof thing. You can have kind of a more chill one which we designed. You can, um, of course, customize that yourself though. And there's another one in which I'll add uh, that some of our students use, which is more of a, like an elegant one, which gives him a whole new look. Um, but over here, so this is probably where the fun is, I guess. So some cool things is we've got the, um, you can display each part of the body, which is a nice, a nice um, feature. So you can just focus on the, you can focus on this, you can add a leg, add both the legs, then jump on the arms. Um, so that's super handy. Now there's tweakers here, and then there's also bendies. So you've got two sets of control there. So you've got one like this, and the other one like that. So I'm not sure if they kind of have the same effect. You've got it just a tiny, you've got a fair bit of control there. So you, can the spot. Yeah. So you can get some nice shapes. Um, this is where you've got the ball rock and stuff like this. Um, oh yeah, so there's some cool stuff in the, the we've got like the pivot, a movable pivot. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a few cool things actually. So you can do both spines, which is the FK and IK, or you can just have the IK, or just the FK. Um, lattice is a head lattice. So that's uh, for if you're doing some cool smears or something. Um, but, oh, let me just see around that out. It doesn't look so strange. Um, spine control. So these are some tweakers that, that you have to kind of clean up the shape, I guess, if you do. If you bend this over like this, let's say. And you want to um, you just clean up this shape. You have these kind of tweakers in here. Where you can really customize the shape that you get. You can rotate them all. Um, do what you need. So there's some body tweakers in here. Uh, the same with the neck. The neck has these sort of controls as well. So you can control the neck. Uh, and now the hip pivot is pretty cool. So basically it's a um, it's this control and the body will pivot around this control. So I think if you select this select the pivot and it's going to rotate around the pivot and if you move the pivot up here it's going to rotate around the pivot like this so I think that's pretty handy if you're going to do something like um, uh, let's, let's say if you, if you move the pivot here oh, let's just uh, switch this here Basically, you can jump around the hand. If you put the hand down and you want to do 
flip over something. I don't know. Um, but that, that's pretty handy. It's worth mentioning. And the hand also has another little control here. It's like a rock, like this. This sort of thing. Um, and then here as well, this side. This is really cool for getting like a relaxed pose really easily. And then, of course, the hand itself has. Um, where is it? This one. This has got all the the, the, the curls basically, and it's got it's got a fist. Needs a bit of tweaking though, but it's a good place to start. Um, and this is where you can turn on bending controls for the arm. So if you can do it here as well, this is for the arm. Um, let's do it here like this, because it's this side, so you can see the bendies. Now there's also one for s upex swim clavicle one. Ah, this one. Squeeze. So it's an interesting one. So this is the stretch the bottom of the arm, stretch top, and then squeeze. So you can roll up the sleeves or something, let's say. Uh, uh, this is all your offset controls as well here. So most controls have offsets. So the, the clavicles have autoclavicle. So maybe that's more if I put it here, I'm saying FK. Um, so that means I rotate this here. That's with autoclavicle. That's without it. This, see, this is why I don't do rig reviews. Look, I've got him all bent over and, and all crooked. Um, That's all. I think that's all that's kind of unique about it. Um, so these kind of controls is where, where all the things are. But the thing is, the picker is, is where everything is. So there's nothing that's not on the picker that you can't find on the rig. Um, you know, a few selection sets here as well. Top half, bottom half, global control. Um, all body tweakers, okay, FK face. Um, the eyebrow, the, these, the, the eyes are pretty flexible, the eyes are pretty flexible, um, you know, they, they can do their thing, but I guess one cool control is, you, know, you have, oh, have this one, which kind of you can do like majority, and then you got these little arrows like this, get like a bit more anger in there, and um, these also have some nice tweaky controls, so you can control that a lot. Basically, there's a lot of control in this rig. You can move the eyebrows about as well if you need to kind of tighten them up a tiny bit. Um, and then, yeah, the mouth is, is cool. I guess uh, one thing that we, um, say we have is these ones here. This is kind of cool. You can control this, this bit as well. Um, 